Okay, in this video, I just wanted to go over uh, S3 access logs and how to query those logs uh, using AWS Athena. So I wanted to show you how to set up, first of all, the, your S3 for logging. Um, so that's going to be right here. So this we have two buckets here. So let's say I want to log all requests, every single action that happens to an S3 bucket. I want to have very fine... Uh, auditing of it and logging. So what I what I have to do is I have to create my original bucket, which I called here the source. This is the one that's going to be logged, and then I have to have a bucket that's going to store all the logging requests, and that's this one right here, destination. So in the source bucket, it's actually just a very simple uh, bucket. I have two files here. One of them I erased. Um, <clears throat> so like if I show different versions. So I set up this bucket with versions um, right over here. So I set it up for versioning, and I also set it up for server access logging. And in this server access logging, I enabled logging, and I enabled, I, I gave it the target bucket to log all the requests to, because I don't want to log all the, all the requests and all the actions in the same bucket. Uh, I can also give it a prefix. I didn't do it in this in um, here, but you could use a prefix for the logs, and that way you can query them easier uh, in Athena. But you don't have to do that. So I enabled access logging. Um, I enabled versioning, and then if I go back to if I go to my other bucket, this is the destination bucket. This actually stores all the um, all of the requests, and as you can see, they're stored in a in a special format. It's not it's not readable. It's it's not very easily readable, um, and you actually have to wait a little bit. So I created this um, a few hours ago because it doesn't um, it doesn't uh, generate these logs right away. So um, you you create this destination bucket. It'll automatically S three will automatically put these access logs in here, and now. You need a way to access these or query these logs, and this is where Athena comes in. So, in Athena, which is over here, you have to set it up um, to point to that destination S3 bucket. So, in in here in settings, if you look here, I gave it the um, the the S3 bucket that we, I just showed you that stored all the access logs. So now that we have that bucket it's ready to do querying. But even before that, we have to create a table, we have to create a database and a table. So Athena will allow us to use regular SQL commands to um, run our queries. And if you look here, there's just a default and a sample database that comes with it. So I'm going to show you here a few commands that I'm going to run. So first of all, we have to create the database itself. So I'm going to run this command in Athena. This is already assuming it's pointing to the right bucket. So if I run this command, it should create this S3 access logs DB, which is right here. And now we can select that DB and create our table in there. So our table is going to be this command. Now, where am I getting, just to show you, where am I getting these commands from? You can, I'll, I'll add this page to the description, um, but here on this page, using Amazon S3 access logs identify requests, you can get um, a lot of these commands here. For instance, right here you can create the database, here you can create the table, and here it even gives you some very useful um, SQL commands that you can run against your data, and that way you can get some insights from your S3 uh, bucket. That you're monitoring. So if I go back here and I cr I'll run this command to create the table. So let's run that. Okay, so now it looks like it, here's here's the table, my bucket logs. And if we look here, here are all the columns. And if you do this little, those three dots there, you can actually do a preview table like that. And it'll select the 
um, the first 10 rows. Now you can see here, it only selected five rows. It actually takes a little bit of time. If I run the query again, then it should have 10, um, 10 rows. So it, it, start, it starts sort of um, indexing all the data so it doesn't happen instantaneously. Let me run it again. There, you see now, now there's actually 10 rows of uh, 10 records that are returned. I run it again. Yeah, see now it's more full. So as you can see, it's um, it it takes just a little bit of time after you create the table for the records to get indexed, and then later you can you can run other commands now. So that page that I referred you to, there's some interesting commands you could run there. For instance, um, you could say if there were some objects deleted, you can run a command that will give you, you know. The, the the accounts the accounts that deleted that ran delete requests for instance on your buckets right so there's things like that there's um, you can also run um, these commands for instance on a specific on a specific um, object in your bucket you can say um, what are like what happened in a certain time frame um, like for instance here I'm giving it a time frame what happened in that time frame to that object what were all the what were all the commands that were run on that object for instance I deleted this hello world JPEG in my s3 bucket just to show that there was a record for um, deletion oops see so like there are there so it gives you records of an actions that happened on a specific object in your bucket so you can always run those kind of commands as well so that's just a, a, a very quick sample there's a there's a lot more that you can do you can run a lot, all kinds of different SQL commands but I wanted to show you how to set up your Athena database and table against your s3 bucket so that you could run commands against it